everybody, I'm Amy, this is my wife Maggie, and together Hello. we are Thinker Thema, and we are back with another episode of 10, out of 10 when we're attempting to rate all of our games on a scale of 1 to 10. Yes, and 10 games at a time. 10 games at a time. <laughs> and this is the one that Maggie has been dreading, the episode that she's like, I just do not yeah. want to get to these games, but we're here. We're here. We're themeless. Not a theme in sight. <laughs> we are looking at... 10 abstract games from our collection. So let's get into it with the first game. All right, the first game we're going to be looking at is Shobu. Now, Shobu is a game uh, where we have four boards and the aim of this game is essentially to just push off all the, the pebbles, these beautiful, really beautiful little stone pebbles of your opponent's color off of one of these four boards. And the way you're going to be doing that is you've got a passive turn and then an aggressive move. So it's like a, a passive move and then an aggressive move. And the way it kind of works is you take your passive move on either of the boards on your side. They're divided by a little uh, white rope that has, I don't think it serves any other purpose, just no. to kind of let you know, these are the ones on your side. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take one move um, from one of your, your stones, and then that move gets to be replicated on the opposite uh, color. So the so for example, if we have the boards on the left that are kind of like a you know darker shade, then I get to replicate that same on either of the boards on the right, either on my side or on my opponent's side. And so what but that's at that point, that's the aggressive move that's going to actually be able to push off, uh, potentially, if I'm close enough, push off one of my opponent's uh, stones off the board. Yeah, and so the cool thing is you're trying to push all of their stones off mm. uh, one of the boards, but you are limited by what you can take from the passive from a passive ability yeah. or a passive action. And I'm so thrown because <laughs> Maggie is literally in pain. I can see I it. I can feel struggle it. struggle so much <laughs> to try and like... Describe a game without the when theme. When it's so abs... I'm like, but, but why? <laughs> like, but why? But why? But why? Because um, we must, I guess. A it's show... Shobu is one of those games that the more you play it, the more you really start to appreciate um, just how interesting and complex this is because you are trying to decide, you know, where you're going to start attacking your opponent, mm. i.e. are they going to lose more of their passive abilities mm -hmm. and is that your strategy? Um, but also you can get to a point where you tie yourself up and you've put your stones in certain positions that maybe now you can no longer move forward. Yeah. And so there's all these ways that you can kind of undo yourself as well as trying to defend mm -hmm. four different boards yeah. with your stones on it. So. I really, really enjoy this game. The I enjoy this most when I have the ability to sit down with someone and play multiple games in a row. One of my friends loves this game. And it's just a game that at first when you sit down to play, it, you know, it's not as great as the fifth game where it's just like, ooh, now I'm starting to see yeah, you're the you're learning the, because you are keeping track of essentially four boards where you're, you know, you're either attacking or you're in, you know, in danger. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as you said, so much of it is in the whole, uh oh, did I leave myself enough room for my passive move to then either trigger the attack or even be able to defend a position? Yes. yes. Um, I think it is a beautiful game as well. So it, it is comes a beautiful with production. these yeah. wooden boards. It has a, a like a very tactile rope that goes between the two players and then no the stones. Um, <laughs> no purpose rope, but I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, and then no two stones are the same, hmm. so they're a very organic stone. Yes. Um, I really, really love it. The, the box is pretty heavy because of all those components, mm. but it's a one that will never leave our collection. Um, it is a 7.6 for me. This is a game, I'm just going to preface this by uh, saying this is a game that when I'm playing it, I am... I appreciate how clever it is, but I am in physical pain because I'm like, why? I just, like, no part of me is invested in just destroying, uh, capturing, and like, ah, oh. gotcha, the other part. So it's a 5.5 for me. It's, um, oh. That's Shobu. Again, I don't think it's a bad game. It's just definitely not a game for me. You don't deserve the game with that rating. That's, that's fine. <laughs> that is fine. Putting that to the side. Our next game is a game, the first of uh, a few games that I have from the GIF 
collection. <laughs> I don't, still don't know how to pronounce that. But they're all by the same designer, um, Chris Berm. And there are seven, I think there's seven in the collection and I own three of them. Mm. Um, Devon is one of my favourites uh, in this series. I, the, I There's something about this game that I just find both really strategically appealing and also really comical. Um, because in this comical. game... <laughs> yeah, wait for it. Um, in this game... You start by dividing up these um, beautiful mm. uh, acrylic discs between yeah. the two players. So there's white and black, but then there are also these uh, red Devon pieces as well. And in the first part of the game, you're simply going to be distributing these out onto this grid-like structure uh, and basically setting up the game to begin. Mm. Then... This game is all about creating stacks. So you are going to be able to take one of your pieces and put it on top of another piece, usually your opponent's color, because you're creating these stacks and the stacks can only be controlled by the player whose piece is on the top of that stack. It's simple so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then the stack can only move a certain number of spaces according to the height of that stack. So when there's three pieces in the stack, it has to jump forward three. Mm -hmm. So that starts to limit your movement a little bit. The other thing is if a piece is completely surrounded by pieces, it can't move. And so from the beginning of the game, you're just working from the edges. Mm. Then the best and most interesting part of this game are the three red Devon pieces because the, the stacks are only allowed to stay on the board so long as they are somehow connected to one of the three red Devon pieces. Um, so as soon as they become disconnected from all three of them that are on the board, those stacks will be removed from the mm. game and pushed off the board in a dramatic fashion when mm. you feel yeah, very particularly clever. Particularly if you're Amy. It's just like, aha! Aha! <laughs> goodbye! <laughs> off the board. But, yeah. Because the fun thing is you can actually encompass one of those red pieces in your stack and then move it away mm -hmm. <laughs> from your opponent's towers to create this dramatic effect and sometimes leave a whole section. Sometimes uh, the whole half board can be yeah. removed. So I really Stranded. love that about this game. And that's what I find really humorous about this game is, and sometimes that happens to you too, and it's still pretty funny where you're just like, oh, oh no, and you see it and you know yeah. that you're only hanging on by one connecting piece and then the opponent moves it and all that hard work of making and owning those stacks yeah. just and gets... It's Throw it in the trash. And sometimes it's like a tactical kind of like sacrifice. So you're like, ah, oh, if I do that, I'm going to lose this, this, you know, stack. But my opponent's going to lose a lot more. So, mm. <laughs> and then, yeah. I don't know if hilarious is the word. Hilarious. <laughs> what used to describe. Hilariously amusing. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel this very strong. Uh, this is a game that's been in our collection for a long time. And I just really adore it. Um, and that's why I gave Devon an 8.1. Mm, wow. that's. I yeah. love the tactile element of it too. I do agree. I, I enjoy the tactile. With all of the ones in the Gimp series, I really enjoy those, those pieces. It's so satisfying the way mm. they stack together. I gave this a 6.1. So again, it's not hey, great. It's an but, improvement. But I will play this over Shobu. And yeah. you have one in this too. I have. And I feel yes. like you do get some satisfaction out of removing all of my towers, my stuff. Some. Stats. I don't find yeah. it hilarious, but yeah. you know, it is somewhat amusing. We're gonna find an abstract for you, Maggie. <laughs> We're gonna find one. The uh, the video is young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Over to you. All right, side. what's the next one? The next one is going to be oh yeah. Uh, this, uh, another one in the GIF series, and this is Link. GIF uh, series? GIF series. Yeah. Um, and is it Link? Li so Link. This Link. one's Link. Yeah. yeah. This one's probably the easiest to say. <laughs> And so in Link, yeah, well, in Link, what you're trying to do is you're, you're again, you start out with a the, the board with scattered um, discs in five different colors plus a, uh, a wild kind of mm -hmm. color. And your aim is to try and make uh, stacks again, but the stacks need to have one of each color. So as soon as it reaches five, either because you got one of each color or you managed to get you know, a, uh, one of the wilds in there, then that is a finished stack. The trick thing, the tricky thing about this is along the way, you're going to claim um, up to two of the colors, which again, similar to, um, to, to Devon, I guess, you can only then, once the color's been claimed, only the person that claimed that color is the one that is able to move those Yeah, but you tiles. can do this at any point at in any the game. Point. So you can, at the start of the game, claim a color and just be like, that is my color now. Yeah. Um, or you can wait until halfway through the game where there's, you know, a really appealing stack and there's a great move and then you'll be like, well, I'm going to claim that because you get to claim it before you take your turn. 
turn. Yes. So right before you take your turn, you go claiming this color. Yeah. And then, uh, and so it's really interesting then the dynamic as as you're progressing. Yeah. At the timing. At what point do you claim it? And there's always going to be a neutral color left behind that either player can um, can activate or move. However, the rule with that one is it can only ever go um, onto a. Um, so again, it, on top of another. Um, T- another disc that is or stack that is the same height or as below. it is or yeah. lower so mm-hmm. if it's just a one it can't all of a sudden jump and you know go on top of a really really tall stack which usually that's something that you can break with your own claimed um, colors yes. so ultimately is you know whoever kind of manages to get by the end of the game the most towers or the most stacks with their color on top. Yeah, because as soon as you make a stack and it has your claimed color on mm-hmm. top, you get to remove that stack from the board. So yeah. then we're counting up how many stacks. I I really enjoy this game. Uh, I like, you know, I like all abstract games. I, I enjoy the twist of this one of the claimed color. That is really fun. Yeah. The thing I like a little bit less about this one is it's a bit harder to keep the rule set in your head about claimed versus passive colors mm-hmm. because it restricts or changes the movements that are possible. Yeah. And so it takes a little while to get into that. I also just realized I, I neglected two key things. One, why is it called link? Oh, yes. <laughs> because you can Important. actually, in this one, create links. So whatever color is on top, it can kind of jump onto another um, tile or another stack that is that same color and then use that as its starting point. So you can do that even multiple times. So you can bounce so around it, the board. Yeah, correct. As mm-hmm. long as it's, again, the, the sort of same color. Yeah. The other thing that I didn't mention is that you can only ever stack on top of something that doesn't have that color already in it. Yes. So a lot of the times, one of the tactical things that you do is uh, to annoy the other person. You, you can see that they're, you know, they've got a red piece and they're going to jump with that red on top of a, um, a green. And I go, mm, I put, put another, another red. red on it. Yeah, yeah, put another red. Put the green yeah, on top. Yeah, because the then... stacks cannot be bigger than five yes. pieces of different colors, yes. including sometimes a wild. But yep. uh, yeah, that is another restriction on this game, and it's a restriction that is why I rate this game a little bit lower because what happens in this game is you very quickly um, run out of legal moves yeah, because of that. Stuck. Yeah, so you yeah. can get a bit stuck and it doesn't feel as satisfying when you are almost about to complete a stack mm. and then all of a sudden that stack can't even move anywhere and it definitely can't get the color that you're missing. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, that causes it a little bit. So combined with the more complex rule set and then just that feeling of, ah, uh, that feels like a little bit, uh, like at the and, end. And sometimes it happens quite early in the game yeah. where you all of a sudden go, ah, uh, yeah. Just well, that one's this, never going to be completed. Yeah, you can yeah. have this like deflating moment of mm. like, oh, well, now that's sort of like a bit of a stale situation. Yes. yes. So for Link, I gave it a 7.1. I still enjoy playing it. <laughs> I still enjoy playing it. I still, and I really do enjoy that claim color dynamic. Yeah. I just like, you know, when you play an abstract, not you, but you know, when you play an abstract, abstract if you like abstracts and it's just relate it's just a little twist and it just makes you smile Mm. because you're like oh i see like this is the puzzle i have to crack in my mind yeah 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 yeah. so for me this is we're kind of going back um back a little bit it's a 5.7 um which again i it means i do enjoy playing this more than shobu more than shobu you're quite good at this however i do I, I enjoyed Devon more because it doesn't, like, with this one, it's that getting to that point of, like, ah, oh, ah, mm-hmm. oh, that mm-hmm. weed, like, all of a sudden anticlimactic, oh, mm-hmm. we're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, it kind of takes a bit of the joy out oh. of it. Anyway, you know? that is Link. And That's the Link. final one from this collection uh, is called Yinch. And Yinch, I feel, is a lot of people's favorite in the series. And I can completely appreciate why mechanically this is a really Um, excellent game. So you are basically trying to connect five. Mm. (laughs) So you have little um, stones and uh, little pieces. And what's interesting about these acrylic pieces is that on one side, they're black and on the other side, they're white. But you're not actually going to be uh, manipulating these little pieces without the help of these rings. So each Mm. player has five rings at the start of the game. And you at the beginning of the game, you're going to position those out around this star-like structure. Is it a star? No, it's like a, a shape. It's, this is a morphous shape. Yeah. It's a, oh, it's, a, it's something gone with many, many <laughs> sides. Um, anyway, you're going to be positioning out your five um, circles or hoops. And then on your turn, you get to drop one of the little tokens into the center of the hoop. Mm. And you place it with your color up. 
Then you get to move the hoop. So then you remove the hoop from around it and you get to move as far as you like in a straight line, as long as you're not crossing any other hoops. Um, and if you jump any other little round pieces, then two things happen. One, you must stop on the other side of that little piece. The other thing is that if you jump over any, they are going to flip. Mm. So if I jump over any white pieces, they're going to flip to black or black to white. And it doesn't matter if you are black or white, mm. you can flip your own pieces too. Yeah. So you have to be it really careful. Indiscriminately flips everything on its path. Yeah, so yeah. you can just jump all the way to the other side of the board sometimes and flip everything along your path and that completely changes the game state and you're trying to as i said at the beginning create a um, connect you're trying to connect five mm -hmm. what's interesting about this game is when you connect five you stack them up and you remove them from the game so you take those pieces out of the game but you also remove one of your hoops or your mm -hmm. circles and that circle becomes the scoring marker and it's the first person Person to connect five um, three times or rather to remove three of their circles mm. from the game but when you remove a circle from the game you are removing the possibility one possible place for you to place a new token yeah. and so it's got this built-in catch-up mechanic yeah. because your your moves are suddenly more limited but you're getting closer to winning the game mm -hmm. and I just I think that is it's superbly done like it is very excellent <laughs> very excellent as is, a mechanical yeah design. it is an interesting because you do feel like if you're kind of running a little bit behind mm -hmm. all of a sudden if the person you know if your opponent is you know two ahead now they've got a considerably fewer opportunities to you know go around and flip all your things or, or annoy your your game so it does make you feel like oh, okay i have a little bit more room to uh, breathe here yeah and i the thing with this one is for, for some reason my brain really struggled to sort of see a lot of the connections and pretty much every time I make a five connection it's almost by mistake yeah, it's it because it's like I've got so many of my of my little discs scattered that then I'll kind of go here and then I'll be, so like, be like and then it's usually oh, aiming and it's yeah. like oh you did I'm like you did it oh yeah cool <laughs> but it's like I yeah I really struggle to see I yeah. like it because it's like it's both satisfying um tactically a tactile, a tactile, way. A tactile way yeah because of the, the little pieces that fit right inside the circle yeah. like it's really nice um but the other thing is just like the satisfaction of flipping things in your favor you're just like haha -ha, you thought you were about to get right but now they're all so black annoying so you're like you're kind of working your way and then it's like, it's like Flip. Oh. but it happens to you as well and it's just this like push and pull yeah. of like the game state and yeah i really like this one but it's not i'm not as emotionally connected to this one as i am to devon for so for that mm. reason for me it's an eight <laughs> they're so high i don't know they're great i mean they're great. I, look you know it's it's for me i'm not even going to give it too much of a preset like it's a 5.6 uh for me it's like it's it's I, my brain just doesn't get no, it's excited so... by oh. by and i think actually i think part partly it's the whole the only purpose of this no, I was going to say it's the fact that you're kind of trying to like trap your opponent, but I guess that's the case with all of these. I just think it's, it's not the way my brain works, but yeah. yeah that's Again, fair. like it's a really interesting, all of these games have really nice tactile elements to them. Like those pieces are very, very satisfying. Yeah, the ones in those series, especially yeah. the acrylic pieces, but we'll move on from those series because oh. if you don't like that series, you're probably very much done. This is interesting um. <laughs> because we're going into one of the games that has been listed in our, you know, uh, 10 games that made our relationship, relationship stronger. Stronger. So this is one of the known, uh, I walk out, I, you know, ban, not ban the game, but it's like, I will not play this game. Like literally Maggie will be like, oh, you're playing blockers. I'm going for a walk. <laughs> Bye. I'll and the she'll dog just out. leave the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's blockers. So blockers is um, a game where you're trying, you've got all of these, Everyone's got the same uh, number of polyomino shapes and in their own color, in their own color. Mm -hmm. And so you're, we all kind of start in one corner of this kind of central plastic board where very satisfyingly these pieces fit into. I will definitely give they it that. Click into, they yeah. click into mm -hmm. it and it's just like, oh, yes, that is really, really good. And all you're really trying to do, you, you, you can only ever um, place 
pieces, like your pieces, if they're touching at a corner from one of your existing pieces, they can't have overlap. Um, adjacent. They can't be adjacent to each other. Yeah, they can't have sides that are fully touching one another. It can only really be at corners. And they must be connected. And they must yes, be yeah. connected. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to kind of get as much, cover as much ground, block off your opponent as quickly as possible, because ultimately it will be, you get to a point where you just can't place any more pieces. And then we kind of count and tally um, how many kind of squares within your pieces you were left with and whoever was left with the most squares is going to lose but whoever managed to like get rid of the most of the biggest pieces and please the most will be the winner i'm smirking already because this game is so mean it's and especially amongst our group of friends it's so super aggressive so um you know some might look at it and be like okay what's a nice little puzzle i can make and like but it, the strategy in this game is to really carve off as much white space as you can and block I mean, everybody from getting into that white space. So then you have the luxury of time towards the end because you've got all this space that nobody has access to. So the idea is always to defend against everybody else and to just like place pieces in such a way that they can't get in, but then so... also try and penetrate where yeah. they're trying to create a wall, quickly get into their little zone of white space so that you have more options I feel to like it encapsulates with. all the worst elements of the seed of humanity. <laughs> of like, no, protect my turf and you're not getting in. And also, I'm going to take over your place. Stake so, your claim and protect your territory. Yeah, is it's the, like it's ultimate that is exactly survival. What you're to do. Uh, yeah. And um, I just love that you're doing that through polyomino tiles. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the least aggressive kind of this, shapes. But this is the thing. It's like polyomino tiles I always associate with like creativity yeah. and building something or Tetris which was kind of like the original polyomino, I think. Yeah. And it's, it's all about like that satisfying fitting everything together. Here, you're kind of doing like, meh, 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 like just doing corners <laughs> and you're leaving gaps everywhere and you're trying to like not allow people to, um, I mean, yeah. So you it's don't really a, get to create something beautiful and artistic. It's not creators, it's blockers. It's all about like blocking everything. <laughs> well, it is in the title. <laughs> yeah. And this is like a very mainstream title. Very, Obviously, yeah. you can yeah. find it in pretty much every department store. Yeah. But for me, it's just oh, your local so super market potentially yeah. it's just so much better and more gamier mm -hmm. than like what you would expect if you haven't played it before but most people probably have played this it's definitely not a game for you if you don't like aggressive tactics because yes. that is just the okay. heart of the game i will say one of my favorite things with this that i'll give it i'll give it this is what you there's one piece that's just the one square and often that one little square, when you see, like, you feel like you've got no choice, you're going nowhere else, you can put that little square somewhere that then all of a sudden opens, opens up, up yeah, yeah, a whole other world of possibilities. So it's like, that That can be very satisfying. I, I have a theory as well that Maggie actually enjoys this game way more than she lets on. And she kind of early on said, I'm not an aggressive player and I don't mm. like it. But now when she does play it, I, I kind of get a sense like she likes it a little bit more I feel... than, her, than her rating will reflect. Well, I feel like... Well, let's go into ratings. Okay. Let's go into ratings. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go first then? Yeah. Um, actually, this is this is, this is is a six for me. So it's actually one of the higher... Uh, of all the ones that we've talked about. And I think partly... Uh, I think it's higher secret, secretly, deep mm, down. She, I, she, You should see how smug she by, is when she carves <laughs> off. And like, I can't get through. Maybe it's because I don't want to give in to those, you know, the sort of... No, that part of myself. You of like, it. <laughs> like, oh, no, no. I've done so much work to try and like, you know, embrace the higher parts of... Anyways. Um, so yeah, it's it's a six for me. It's a 7.9 for me. <laughs> I'm surprised that it's uh, lower than some of the other ones. And I was going to say, okay, it's, yeah. maybe the reason why I'm enjoying it more now is in contrast to some of the other incredibly dry abstract games that you've put me through. Yeah, that's fair. I feel so, like it's, it's, relative. it's slightly lower for me. Mm. Not, It's still really high at 7.9 because it's such yeah, a basic concept. But I mm. feel like there's kind of a strategy but it's kind of not and it's yeah. kind of like it just really depends on what your opponents are doing and it's a it's very like one track mind kind of. like I don't feel like there's yeah. a lot of like uh, thinking about your strategy in advance and how mm. you can play it out differently because it really depends on what everyone's yeah. doing around the table and it can be quite aggressive and I do prefer actually a strategy game where it's like I've bested you whereas this mm. doesn't feel like that sometimes because it's just like haha -ha, and you're just like oh yeah. okay well it's, it's now really... and then also player elimination because it's yeah. like well now I can't make any moves so I'm just watching you play out the rest of the game so that's why it's a little bit lower 
lower for me. Yeah, all right. So, so that's Blockus. I'm going to put them blockus. down here because I'm running out of space up here. Okay, moving on to the next game and <gasps> Another uh, one we might be able to tempt Maggie with, and that is Project L. Mm. So Project L is a, another polyomino tile game, yeah. but in this one you are trying to use um, the shapes that you have and own, which are polyomino shapes, of different <laughs> levels, and the different levels really represent the bigger pieces uh, um, yep. at a higher level. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to place them on these cards that have different shapes that are these very satisfying dual layered cards yeah, where you're, dented, yeah. yeah, where you're, you've got to build those shapes uh, with the t with the little pieces that you have. Mm. But the interesting thing about this is that. Uh, when you complete one of those tiles, it's going to give you victory points sometimes, mm -hmm. or uh, sometimes, or always, a, a new Tetris piece that you can use yes. on future cards. Um, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to collect as many of these cards as possible, obviously, to get the most victory points in the game. And on your turn, you, you can do three actions. So one of those actions might be, oh, you can repeat them if you like, yeah. but one of those actions might be to draft new tiles, yeah, new, new cards, puzzles. puzzles. Yep. because you're allowed to have four of them at once. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you can upgrade your Tetris pieces. So you might like put one back in the yeah, in the supply, supply yeah. and like get the next level up, yeah. which is going to help you achieve. Or you can put a tile down onto one of your existing puzzles. Mm -hmm. Or you can do the master builder action, mm -hmm. which I think that's what it's called. I think master it's just master mm -hmm. action. Yeah. Master action, which is where you can use... Um, you can put a piece on each one of your puzzles. So that's the most optimal thing to do. So yes. you want to fill out and make sure you have four puzzles at all times if you can. Mm. And then you want to use that master action where you can put a piece on each puzzle. And it really just goes on and on like that. There are two <laughs> rows of puzzle cards, mm -hmm. one that is simpler. And most of the time you start there and they're worth fewer victory points. And a lot of them don't even have victory points because they're just a way of getting new pieces. Mm. And then you can start working on these more complex, intricate, puzzles that take longer require more pieces yeah. and the satisfying thing about this game is as the game goes on you get more and more tetris yeah. pieces and then you're like i can do anything yeah because you don't lose your pieces when you complete a puzzle they they, they just come kind back, of go back into yes. your own pool so mm -hmm. yeah you're, and you you're, gain new ones yeah. and then you're upgrading them and so you end up with this really satisfying mm. pile of pieces yes yeah so maggie how do you feel about I, actually, this very abstract themeless game look I really enjoy this. Game. <laughs> yeah. We've won her over. I think because because I do feel like there's that there's that sense of progression where it's like I'm getting increasingly more uh, powerful in terms of my my puzzle uh, filling in ability but also um, I'm actually like filling in so it's actually creating it feels like I'm kind of filling in these puzzles and creating them in as opposed to like you know like the and, and it's very multiplayer solitaire you're yeah. kind of just head down and doing your own thing uh the only kind of interaction with other players is oh you know someone may have taken a puzzle that i had my eye on but there's always a, a range of them i'll say of all of the games that i think we're covering today this is the only one that technically you know they usually don't have any hidden information like all mm. of the but this one you do have cards that come out the yes. puzzles come out so yeah. you don't necessarily know exactly the state of the game or set of play the whole yeah it's quite different to the other ones in yeah. this list we've included it because you know it's themeless it's, it's very abstract but yeah. it's also it doesn't have that same like head-to-head -head level of competition no, no. and that's why i don't rate it as highly <laughs> because this game is so multiplayer solitaire that i find myself actually a little bit bored sometimes mm. and that's because i'm just waiting for it to come back around to my turn and so i'm just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also it feels to me like it's not i wouldn't say it's on rails you've got freedom to do mm. what you want to do but it just feels like a bit rinse and repeat i'm like new cards fulfill them done new cards fulfill them done and i'm not feeling like the, that sense of achievement and like I've cornered you mm -hmm. and now that's really exciting to me because I've played out this great strategy. This is more just like, yeah, I'm getting more powerful, but... Yeah, I can't use any of that against you. So this is so it's like it, it's you take all of that and change the tone, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting more excited. Really. I was like, I get to do my own thing. No one can mess up with my thing, you know. Yeah. So this is actually really high for me. This is an eight. For me, Whoa, which is incredibly, is... I really, really enjoy my time with this game, and I love the colorful mm. pieces and adding them up, and in that sense of like, now I'm more and more powerful, but it's mm. not at the expense of someone else. Mm. So, yeah. so what you're saying is games don't really need a theme. 
Well, apparently this one doesn't. <laughs> but I think all the colorful pieces. Uh, yeah, I, like it has. I mean, if you were, if it had farming things on it, and you were building out little farmhouses, and it was still Tetris, would it would be even higher for you, wouldn't it? Oh, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, it so would make no sense. <laughs> it would make absolutely. It would no be painted sense. on, but it would still be like because at its core, I enjoy the sense of creation of like yeah, building something, and the sense of like full agency over what I'm doing, where no one's gonna come in and like destroy, kick my my sandcastle, as you. You know, often. <laughs> I mean, to okay. Do so this game. game, it would be a probably a seven-ish, but I'm going to give it a seven point one mm -hmm. because I like the dual layered boards and I like the tactile element, especially yeah. when you're exchanging the pieces. Yeah. I like the table present, so I like the game. I'll play it with you, but it just doesn't scratch the same itch as the other abstracts. We found one. We found Maggie scored it higher than an me. Abstract game that I actually really, I know. really this enjoy. This is amazing. What's go. our next game? Our oh, next the next game. one's over here. Oh, yeah. Yes. So the next. Next game and why really is... <laughs> really old game yes uh, it's stratego um this and is a has game no right being this good <laughs> okay look this is a game that i had never played and you had never played when we actually were very no. late to playing this game one it's battle it's war nearly it does actually technically have a theme so this one is you know it does technically yeah, but yeah. we just choose to ignore it because we hate the thing we, we don't really no, like we're not into it. war not into and, and like battling like and that, that sort of stuff but, but also yeah. i will say that a lot of people after we covered this the first time on our channel a lot of people reached out and said i grew up with that mm. game um and i feel like maybe it was around in australia but it wasn't as prominent as it was mm. particularly in the states i think this was like a really big right. title that a lot of people had in their childhood Homes. Yeah, I don't remember it in South America either. Like, it never really yeah. was one of the. But again, it could anyway. have been just not a theme that I was into. Yeah. So, just, so it yeah. wasn't on our radar until yeah, until recently. This yeah. new edition. And you, you really loved it. <laughs> I find it really funny. So essentially in Stratego, you've got, you know, the two sides. We have the exact same uh, army, I guess. So you have all these different uh, characters from the, the spy and scouts, and they're all numbered. So at, through to, I, I can't remember even who the highest ten. number, the 10, but I think it's mm -hmm. the marshal. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. so the whole idea is you're going to be, at first, the first uh, strategic thing that you're going to do is how you're going to be placing all of your your army to essentially protect your flag. This is a game of capture the opponent's flag. Um, and so you've got a flag that you need to sort of put somewhere and protect very well. You've got bombs that you can kind of plant and neither the flag nor the bombs can ever move. So once you've yes. set them, they're set in place. But important detail, you can see what your pieces are yes. and your opponent cannot. Mm -hmm. So the pieces have two sides to them, one that looks completely uniform and the other side that tells you what character it is and the value or if it's a bomb or yeah. if it's a flag. And those are facing you. So your opponent just sees a wall of the same piece yes. four rows just little of the towers. same piece mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so then you're on to you're just going to be moving one by one so all of your your um, little characters that can move mm -hmm. will only be moving one step at a time only not diagonally so only you know forward back left right and then usually attacking or tapping you know someone from the uh, one of the the towers of the opposite team and hoping that you have a higher number than they are so for example if I'm if I'm attacking with my three which is the minor and I ended up attacking what ended up being a two which was the scout then I would win I get to take that place and the scout is removed from the game if unfortunately I were to tap and you know attack that um, my opponent and they were a four or higher now I'm the one who's who's out so that's very very simple and then there's a couple of little um, what do you call it sort of exceptions where for example anyone that touches a bomb so if you tap, you know, one of those little towers thinking, oh, hopefully I'll over, you know, I'll overpower them and it's a bomb, you're dead. Unless it's the number three, which is the minor, which actually deactivates that bomb and removes the bomb from the game. The other exceptions are the scout also doesn't, you know, that's the only one that can move and attack any length um, of, of... It has range. Uh, yeah, it has range. So mm -hmm. any number of, of um, blocks or squares. Then you also have the spy, which is the level one, which is the weakest, but also is the only one that can, oh, yeah, the only character that can kill and the, ten. the 10, the marshal. So, but if, but obviously if any other characters touch it, <laughs> it's dead. It's very weak. So you've got the, that sort of combination of things and then how you decide how you're kind of moving around. And so 
that's essentially it. That's but, it sorry, the reason why I said this does not deserve to be as loved as it is by us, or me in particular. Mostly you. <laughs> yeah. It's because it includes two mechanics that are really not my favourite mechanics. There's, oh, yes. There's, um, it's deduction, because you are mm-hmm. trying to work out, because you can't see what the other person's pieces are, you're trying to deduce... Firstly, what is the piece? Mm -hmm. And secondly, where is the flag? And the first thing is, what is the piece? Is an interesting one because they have pieces that they can't move. So the flag and the bomb. So if you're getting really close to a piece and they're not coming in to attack you Mm. with that piece, you're like, maybe they can't move it because it's a bomb. And maybe I shouldn't go in like and attack that Mm -hmm. because I'm going to be blown up. Um, And the other thing is maybe you start to run into a whole heap of bombs that seem to be surrounding like a a yeah, <laughs> this happens to me all the time, <laughs> and she's like, "What are you protecting? What are you I'm protecting like, nothing. over there? <laughs> <laughs> no nothing. reason, nothing to see there. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to see." Um, and so you, you're trying to work out without having obviously you can't see the pieces. You're trying yeah. to deduce what's there, so you yeah. can go and grab that flag. Yeah. And then the other element, which is kind of you know a mechanic or an element that people don't tend to enjoy, there is a very strong memory element mm. in this game. So once someone attacks you and maybe Maggie attacks me with my 10 and I've got a 2 and my 2 dies and is removed from the game, I know now know that that piece of Maggie's is a 10. Mm. I still can't see it anymore because she's it turned back, it back around. Yeah. But I now need to remember that mm. I maybe I need to go get my spy and attack her 10. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I can see the writing on the wall that if she makes a path mm-hmm. through here, I'm in big trouble because nothing can yep. beat that 10. And so you start to learn information. Or oh, I've been blown up once by a bomb, and so yeah, I'm not going to go. But that's a go, bomb. Remember, bomb, that's a bomb. <laughs> the bomb can kind of continuously, uh, yeah, unless it's deactivated by a miner, it can re-explode and re-explode. It doesn't get removed from the game. So, yeah. yeah. So... That is Stratego. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting game. It's one that when it, when you play it... Even though, in, <laughs> despite all those things I don't like about it, it's just funny. It is actually quite funny. Like, you do mind yeah. to go, oh, no! Or, yeah. like, oh, there's or, a bomb. And or I think like, part oh, of it is yeah. the table talk. Because, I'm, yeah. you know, because yeah, yeah. we're talking to each other, I'm like, oh, what are you hiding over there? Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. nothing, nothing. Yeah. I do find myself, like, laughing a lot with this one. With all yeah. the, oh, no. Uh, I don't, again, you know, it's not something that I'm going to play over and over again. And so for that reason, I don't even know if you can have really complex strategy with it. But I'm not really invested enough in finding it. <laughs> I think it most, of be the more strategy, of like a, most of the yeah. strategy, most of the is in the setup, yeah. and then it's basically playing itself out. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. um, I enjoy it. What do you give this? Uh, I gave it a seven. Okay. And I gave it a seven because you know I thought about like is a seven feels high for this high. like mm. game that has like all of this like. Um, kind of memory and yeah. deduction but at the same time I just can't deny that like it, it makes yeah. me happy when I play it and so it's a seven it's not higher for the same yeah. reasons right. yeah. it's a six for me which is actually okay. it feels quite high for a theme that I don't like and something yeah. that's fairly high. but it's because of the laughter that I find like those moments of like oh no or like uh, yeah so it's like yeah but it's super to easy it. to teach as well yeah very very easy yeah to teach. very so, simple game a stratego there you go there you go now the next game is a game called hive this is the pocket edition yeah the pocket edition now an interesting backstory on this is that we got this game very very early into getting into gaming mm. like way way back when it might have been one of the first board games i went to a board game shop and because it's so prevalent yes i was like ah oh, let's try this and then i read the rule book and at the time this is it's just a funny reflection because at the time i was like this this is so complex As, i yeah am never going to be able to learn this game and now we play these games that are like the rule book is like a yeah. literally a book yeah yeah and there's all these intricate rules whereas like, actually oh. this is quite simple yeah, yeah and and you know playing it recently it's it's really not that difficult at all. Yeah. Yeah. You are playing a game of trying to surround your opponent's B. Mm. So all of the tiles in this game are these hexagonal pieces, which mm-hmm. are beautifully acrylic. They yeah. have this indented pattern of uh, an insect. Mm. 
and all of the insects are able to move in different ways. Some that make kind of logical, thematic have, sense. Actually, this yeah. has, this does have a little bit of a theme, it does have a and theme. all the yeah, and all those pieces technically have a bit of a thematic link to yes. how that animal would potentially move. Yeah, and so call back to you it. want to surround their um, their queen bee, mm. uh, but the, it doesn't matter whether it's surrounded by your pieces or theirs. As soon as they're surrounded, it's, that's game over. Yeah. But what's really interesting about this game is you start with none of your pieces deployed and then you're slowly deploying them out one by one and you can only deploy them out when they're touching your color tile mm. so they can't be also touching the other player's tile which means yes. you kind of have to deploy them that's a little bit further away from when mm. the action's all happening and then you get to try and move them in and you're trying to surround your opponent's yep. B. But there's this interesting thing that happens that you know, for example, the ant is one of the soldier ant, I think it's called, is one of the most powerful pieces because you can put it out there and then it can just run around the it whole puzzle. Around. It's unlimited. It can go wherever it likes as around long as the it puzzle. It can go around, yeah. Yeah, and then it can go, you know, and and um, stop, you know, around mm -hmm. the the bee. So it's like super powerful. But what happens in our games is that I'll, you know, have a ant out there and Maggie will move her ant to be outside my ant and now my ant is stuck. Because you, you're never allowed to move if it would break off or leave, you know, part yeah. of the puzzle, puzzle stranded, disconnected. disconnected yeah. Yes. So all of a sudden, if you kind of go, well, well, now this this tile is dependent on, you know, yeah, then now it's stuck. It can't move unless you somehow add other tiles and kind of extend and reconnect in a different way so that one can kind of come out. Yeah. So that's one interesting little tricky bit about it and but, that's that's quite amusing when yeah. you're like creating this long stack of tiles yeah. where you're trying to trap each other um there's like a spider it moves three spaces mm -hmm. there's a ladybug and i think it's like a dung beetle or something yeah there's a beetle, beetle. yeah and, there's a beetle and they're able to like jump on top of the puzzle mm -hmm. and move around so that's like an interesting way to get out of like some yeah. sticky situations so the main thing with this is, and this is what we thought was so difficult when we first were into gaming is that every insect moves differently mm -hmm. and even for the earlier games they suggest you know, leaving a couple of the insects out so that it's sort of a bit simpler. But it's like, now that we've played a lot of games, it's like, oh, okay, no, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's fine. not too bad. It's, <laughs> it's not too okay. bad. Yeah. I really actually enjoyed this game more when we played it recently hmm. than I had a memory of it. So yeah. like if, when I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, it's okay. Like I'd be happy to cull it probably. But mm. like when we've been playing it recently, I actually quite enjoyed it. And I thought yeah. you and I were very evenly matched. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree. I think, I, and I think it's partly all the, the, the upskilling along the way yes. of like doing so many other different types of like strategy games mm -hmm. and things that then meant that, yeah, we kind of have the bandwidth to, yeah, to know what to do, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. What's your score? I really liked it. I gave it a 7.5 oh, nice. um, because I, I, I really like it. I think the one thing that holds it back from being a bit higher is just the, um, trying to teach someone it quickly mm -hmm. and trying to remember how all of the insects move. It doesn't yeah. come like naturally to me. Yeah. Mm. I gave this a seven actually. So that's prompt. Yeah. It's one of my highest. Is that from Project Tale? Um, wow. One of my highest. Because, well, it's the one with the most theme. Because <laughs> of all the ones. Because yeah, all of the, yeah, all of the, <laughs> I enjoy my, like I've, I found myself really enjoying the process of kind of going, Ooh, but then this, you know, this insect can move this way. And then mm -hmm. how do you trap it? Um, yeah, but it's still not a super, super high number because mm -hmm. the concept of like my own, my only purpose here is to trap my opponent. I don't tend to enjoy that as much, but I agree much higher than my original uh, feelings when we first played this you yeah. know, years and years ago. So that is Hive. Hive. And the next one is a relatively new game mm. that only came out last year and it made my most anticipated, or was it this year? I don't know, what, yeah. what is time and space? Um, but it was on my most anticipated list mm -hmm. for this year. So it must have come, just come out, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's one from a very, uh, people will recognize this series. Mm -hmm. There are many different games like Corridor and Quarto <clears throat> made by, um, what is it? Uh, Gigamic? Yeah. Gigamic? 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 Yeah. I never thought about how to say that out yeah. loud until this very until moment. This, yeah, just now. Um, but this is Koale. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Koale is a game where it's the theme loosely, and there is really no theme, but the theme loosely is based on that idea of stacking of stones mm. to make the Tower of Stones yeah. that are kind of a meditative yeah. uh, mindful. reflection yeah. that you see stacked in nature mm -hmm. so that people can take photos on Instagram. Um, but <laughs> or just actually be present and meditate. <laughs> 
Um, but Koale is a game where we start with um, these neutral pieces on mm. the corner of the board. So there is a colour that represents each opponent, then there is a third neutral colour, and we will place two of the stones stacked on top of each other on each one of the corners. Now, on your turn, what you're going to be doing is adding one of your stones on top of one of the stacks on the board and then moving in a mancala kind of way mm -hmm. where you are going to place your stone on top, then pick up the entire stack and drop one off along the way as long as you are moving in like an adjacent way, not mm -hmm. diagonal, and you can't go back on the space you just came from. Mm -hmm. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to connect four in a very elaborate way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, overall, yeah, yeah, of your own color. Of yeah. your own color. And um, of course, what it means that the rocks are in stacks or the stones are in stacks is that if Maggie comes in and covers one of mine, mm. you end up not being the stone that's on top of the stack and therefore it doesn't count towards being part of the Connect 4 game. So yeah. it's only the stone that's on top of the stack. Yeah. Which means that in order to get my stone back out, I'm going to have to put another stone on it and then like drop them all around mm. so that I'm back on top. Yeah. And that is essentially it. Yeah. Mm. I actually really enjoyed this game. I, I don't know why I think, I, well one, the tactile element of it, I really enjoy those wooden pieces and even though they don't click um on one another like the gif uh, series does they just feel really really nice and they kind of sit really nicely together on top of them and this sense of like the leaving the trail behind and almost kind of creating like a drawing of colors i really really enjoy that and uh yeah i don't know why it, with this one I, I actually found it easier to visualize the the paths that I would need to make to end up connecting like mm. a series it was actually like it was just sort of like appearing in front of me it's like oh yeah like I do not know why but I yeah and I had the exact opposite <laughs> feeling of this game I I know that lots of people love this game but for me it's the same with color puzzles for for me this one I just I really struggle to see the move mm. um so some of the other ones we talked about very straightforward. I feel like I can play out a strategy. This mm. one, I'm just looking at it. And the other thing about it is that the game state changes so much between mm. your turn and your opponent's turn because they can just pick up a whole stack and then just like cover everything. Mm. And then I feel like all of my options now have to be reevaluated. Yes. And so that's a good point. I think because mm. I tend to be more of an instinctive player yeah. where I, that's one of my downsides as well as I can't think too far in advance. Mm. And this one means that I can relax because it's like, you know, there's, it would be very, very hard mm. to really plan too far in advance because there's so many different towers and there's so many opportunities, like different ways in which my opponent can go on top of them. And then so many different ways in which they can move them. So it's mm -hmm. almost like, unless you're like a real, you know, sort of beautiful mind type genius, it's mm. almost impossible to really see all of the possibilities and plan yeah. ahead. So I actually really like being able to just like organically like respond and, and make the best with the state of the game at that point, which is actually very different to how I approach uh, usually like, you know, a Euro game or a big strategy game. Mm. I like to be able to know exactly like what am mm. I going to try and like how does that play out? Whereas here, it's a lot more... Um, yeah. You're much better with colour puzzles too. And yeah. there's a lot of like, you know, tracking there's of the colours in this. I guess, yeah, yeah, I don't know what it is about it. But mm. it's not only that I found it really difficult, but maybe it's because I found it difficult. I just felt like not very engaged with it. And mm. it makes me a little bit sad because this was one of my most anticipated games mm. of the year. And it didn't it didn't quite hit the same as some of the others yeah. in the collection. No, I quite enjoyed it. Okay, yeah. let's, see, let's look at uh, ratings. Uh so I gave this a 6.9. Wow. <laughs> well, see, I came to save it a little bit. I gave it a 7.3. I actually okay. really... Another one where yeah. Maggie has outrated me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really... Yeah. I actually wonder now... we should change our channel name to... Thinker Thinker. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Um, but the one that scraped the eights was Project <laughs> L. And that was a bit of a, you know, an outlier there. No, so, no. I mean, yeah, you're changing. Yeah. You're changing. Uh, yeah, well, you know, people have noticed that you've started talking a lot more about theme when you're talking about things. And even when you're teaching now. So it's like a thing where, you know, 
we're having a big because I appreciate that everybody big... learns differently. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're and I do we're like a big influence on one another. Yeah, apparently. All right, so that is Koala. And the last game is a game from that same collection. Oh. It's called Quarto. This is and the teeny tiny version. This is the small <laughs> version. So it does come in the larger version, uh, the same as Koala that and we just giant showed you. versions. In and some I wish I could find the huge version that they once had of this, um, which is nowhere to be found. But anyway, this is a tiny version. And the reason why it's a tiny version is because I gave away <laughs> my full size version. And I had to go and buy again this tiny version just to include it in this list because I teach people this game a lot and I really love it. But the interesting thing about that is I only discovered it last year in October at mm. PAX Australia. Yeah. And so it had not been on my radar until then. And now I just absolutely adore this game. So what is it? It is a game of Connect 4. But, another one. Yeah. yeah, another one. Yeah. But in this game, you are trying to connect four of a certain condition of mm. which there are four conditions. So there are a number of wooden, beautiful wooden pieces. And these pieces can either be black or white. Mm -hmm. First condition is color. The second condition is they can be tall or short. Mm -hmm. So height is the next condition. The third condition is that they can have a hole in the top of them or be flat. Mm -hmm. And the final condition is that they can be square or round. Mm. If you connect four pieces in a row, or if you're playing a slightly more advanced version in a square, you know, two by two, yeah, two by two grid mm -hmm. um, on this on the puzzle grid, you win the game. But the twist on this game is that you are handing your opponent the piece that they need to put down onto the puzzle. So the trap here is to not hand your opponent a piece that will win them the game. And the way this plays out is just amazing because you are essentially trying to keep track of the piece that you can't give them. So if there are three white pieces in a row on the board, in your mind you're like, don't give them a white piece, don't give them a white piece, don't give them the white piece, give them the black piece. Then they've set up a little trap that has like three holes in the top and you're like, don't give them a white piece or a piece that has a hole in the top. Okay, I'll give them the brown piece that's circular, that's flat top. Mm -hmm. Like that should be safe. And the more you play and the more pieces go out onto the board, the more dangerous it becomes. The other trap is not to make a mistake in your own placement such that there is no piece that you can give them where, where they mm -hmm. can't win. For yeah. example you've accidentally set up now there was three white and now you've set up three black. So what are you going to hand them? There's yeah. nothing left you can yeah. hand them. And so you can corner yourself into losing the game. Mm. I just, it is so simple and brilliant. And the people that I teach it really, really enjoy it so much so that we had a bracket tournament of this at my work <laughs> because everybody was just so into it. And there's different types of gamers in mm. this as well. There are other people who stretch it out into a 45 minute like, staring at it oh but I really like enjoying it in the fast like you only have like 10 seconds to place and pick up a piece mm. and hand it over because it's in that like having to remember what not to give your opponent mm. and what not to do to trap yourself at, at that fast pace so satisfying this is such a painful game experience <laughs> for me I cannot put into words again I think it's a very very clever concept and somehow it's like there's something in my wiring where as soon as I'm like playing it, I'm like, it's like a switch is flicked and it's like, I just do not care. Like I'm just so immediately and intensely bored, like actively bored, not just like a passive, oh, this is what look like a, like a, oh, everything hurts. Why is this happening? And it's the exact opposite of the last game in that you do really need to plan ahead and you need yeah. to keep a lot in your head yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. No. no. You can't and be so, instinctive in this game. No. And so it's mm. like every part of me is like, why? <laughs> I just want out. I don't, it's like, just, just here, finish the game. This is the piece that will just put it there. Yeah. This is not a game that I connect with. I all. give this game an 8.2. I, I adore this game. It's uh, so far my favorite in the series by a long way. Um, and I just, if you like abstract games and you haven't played this, you absolutely have to try this game. It's wonderful. I'm actually going to actively like downgrade this game a little bit from DVA from what I had written down. Because um, the more you talk about it, the, the, more, more, <laughs> the more I talk about it, the more I put myself in like more just remembering, the more it's like, oh, <laughs> I just do not. So... I'm going to give this a 5.4 
because even just then I was sort of talking, thinking about like I gave Shobu a 5.5 and I would rather play Shobu than this by a point one. If I'm forced, <laughs> if you had to play, if it's like, them. you know, it's either this or not breathing. <laughs> One of these two games. Dramas. <laughs> um, the game lasts like 15 minutes. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. So calling it. Let's call it. Uh, no, we are not calling it. <laughs> it is not going anywhere. None of these games are going anywhere. Uh, uh, so that uh, is 10 abstracts from our collection. We do have a couple more, but, you know, 10 at a time. Mm. Um, and we hope you've enjoyed this, at least listening to us disagree, because this is probably going to be the episode where we have the biggest gaps overall mm. between. Yeah. But I'm really surprised that you actually liked a couple of them. Me too. More than me. I am very surprised. And as I was talking through them, I'm like, yeah, that is, you know, that is an enjoyment, yeah. enjoyable aspect of it. So It's yeah. not a high proportion of them. So no. basically we need to buy more of them in order to narrow in on more games I that you'll enjoy. I don't think that's the takeaway. No. That's my takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll be back with more board game content soon. But otherwise, bye for now. Bye.